The story begins with a protagonist, Gene, on his first day at the animal school. When someone throws a pineapple at him, he throws it back and hits a wolf girl. As she tries to attack him, she ends up hitting the principal's aquarium, breaking it, and the girl uses the pieces as toys. In this world, there are humanoid animals where the females have many human characteristics, while the males are more animalistic, and you all know why that is. The students believe in the philosophy of the law of the strongest, and we follow Gene, a human who hates animals and was sent there. At lunchtime, he struggles to find food suitable for humans. Coincidentally, the protagonist ends up sitting in front of the wolf girl, who is furious, but using his knowledge of animals, he makes her like him. Her name is Runka, and she invites the protagonist to join her pack, but he refuses and throws a bone far away to distract her. Looking back, Jean finds a human girl named Atomi and decides to have lunch with her, feeling very happy until Runka returns and tells her to stay away from her male, driving the girl away. Jean gets furious and is rude to the girl, who gets sad and says she believes beings of different species can be friends and form a pack. She also tells him that in the past, she was harassed by some bears and a human boy saved her, and crying, she runs away. In reality, the story was not quite as she told it. The boy who saved her was Jean himself, who got beaten up by the bears and had his wounds licked by her, which made him hate all animals. The next day, Hitomi tells Jean that she plans to start a cooking club and wants him to join her, which he loves. Again, Runka appears, getting expelled by him and leaving sad. While carrying some things for the new club, they see the wolf girl being used as a pack mule by a zebra. When the striped girl is about to hit her, Hitomi stops her, but Runka says it's okay because it's necessary to join a group. Discovering that she actually wanted to join Jean, the zebra tries to hit her with her whip but is stopped by the protagonist. Angry at her arrogance, he teaches the girl a lesson, revealing to everyone that zebras are closer to donkeys than to horses, making her cry and run away, the same happening with Runka. Hitomi finds Runka alone in a corner and about to invite her to join the cooking club. Some bears appear. They want the human girl, and Runka tries to protect her unsuccessfully until the protagonist arrives helping Hitomi escape and using bear spray to knock them down. However, there was a sink nearby, and they wash their eyes. When they are about to destroy the protagonist, Runka gets furious and goes after them, being easily defeated. Until, when trying to hit him again, the T-Rex teacher appears and puts them in her place. We discover that it was Hitomi who brought the teacher there, and seeing how close they were, Runka decides to give up. However, wanting to thank him for saving her, the protagonist says he will join her pack. This makes Runka very happy, and as a common method among wolf interactions, she starts licking his mouth. Even Hitomi can't escape. Joining the cooking club, Jean explains that Runka can be the pack leader, but Hitomi is the club president and he the vice president, and for Runka to be officially part of it, she has to cook something delicious. Then a koala named Yukari also appears to join, and even being an animal that only eats eucalyptus, she is looking for a food she ate in the past. When she asked her mother about it, she received a violent response to never speak of it again. So, she starts cooking and makes a special spaghetti that everyone likes, passing the test. When it's Runka's turn, Jean has to help her at Hitomi's command, and while cooking, he hears Yukari talking to her beloved and putting him in the friend zone. Angry at the koala for bringing up this subject, he lets Runka cook alone. After it's ready, he says her final test is to eat all of it to truly join the club. However, he didn't expect her to actually eat at all, and when Yukari tastes the food, she discovers it's the dish she was looking for, unlocking a memory for her. In reality, koalas have bacteria that allow them to digest toxic eucalyptus, but they are not born with them. The mother koalas eat the eucalyptus and pass it to their babies through the back door. Even so, she finds it delicious, and we see that someone found the cooking club fun. Needing vegetables to cook, they go to the gardening club to ask for some, but first, a cat girl named Kurumi appears, using her purrs to make Atomi and Yukari accept her. Arriving at the club, the boars refuse to give them vegetables because production has decreased significantly due to someone stealing them. However, using her purrs, 
Kurumi gets the food for the protagonist group. Back at the club, the cat cooks with them, but wanting to sleep, she tries to make everyone give up cooking to turn it into a nap club. However, this time her powers don't work because everyone loves the club too much to give up. So she leaves. The next day, Runka finds another member for the club and takes the protagonist to her, a sloth named Mayubi. Being from a species that eats only 5 grams of leaves a day, Jean didn't want to include her in the group, but due to threats from the brontosaurus teacher, he had to help her to her room. Having moved too much, she ends up dying, but is carried to her dorm. The joke about her death is that almost anything can kill a sloth. Arriving at the room, we see several sports she tried to practice, and Runka undresses her to give her a bath, but without soap, she goes to get some, leaving the protagonist to take care of her. He cleans her with just water, and as a thank you, Mayubi makes him tea and dies for having exerted herself too much. She thanks the protagonist for letting her join the club and is very happy because she won't have to be alone anymore. Furthermore, with the other girls showing up, we see that the cat girl also really wanted to join their club, even though everyone already considered her a member. A few days later, Mickey, the student council president, decrees the prohibition of friendship between different species because of the protagonist club. Arriving home, she takes off her clothes because it is too shameful for naked mole rats to wear them. By the way, how do they reproduce, given that the males are these little rats and the females are human-sized? I don't even want to think about it. She orders her subordinates to record the activities of the cooking club, who film each of them, except Kurumi, who is a cat. When she shows the video with Runkai and Jean, they leave Mickey embarrassed by their shamelessness, and she concludes that it's all the protagonist's fault, thinking he wants to create a multi-species harem. They continue their investigation until some lionesses appear and take Jean to their boss. His name is King, and he wants the protagonist help to win over an impala he is in love with, even though he has a harem of lionesses. Her name is Shio, and using his lionesses to beat him up, he gets Jean to listen and tells him his story. King believes that Jean and Runka are a couple and comments that his love for Shiho came naturally, even though it seemed more like hunger than anything else. Taking Runka's advice, he decides to try talking to her in person, but obviously it doesn't work with her running away every time. While lamenting, another lion appears with his beloved as a hostage, demanding he give up his harem. However, when he says he would eat Shiho, King turns into a super scion and beats them all up cutting his mane so the lionesses will leave him and the impala won't be involved anymore. He explains that he just wanted to talk, and they decide to become friends. Back in Mickey's room, she puts on her uniform and heads to the cooking club to shut it down, feeling very embarrassed because wearing clothes is something to crave for them. On the way, they encounter Karumi, and some mole rats are left as sacrifices to complete the mission. Arriving at the club, Mickey says she will shut it down, but at Hitomi's appeal, she changes her mind, provided they expel all non-human members, and Jean loves this plan. However, Runka appears with her friends who had served as shields, and having been saved, they ask Mickey to reconsider. Realizing she was overreacting, Mickey changes her mind and leaves. With King stepping down from his throne as school king, the carnivores show their teeth and start battling for the title. In the club, they talk about this situation, and Yukari reveals a rumor that whoever becomes king will receive enough food for 100 years and will also be able to do whatever they want at school. Mayubi says other schools are also eyeing the title and that several carnivores have shown up with their heads buried in the wall. Runka says they don't need to worry because she will protect them all and reveals that she has an older sister she hasn't seen in a long time. However, Feral is outside and seeing the protagonist rejecting her little sister, she enters, destroying the door. Unlike Runka, she's huge, and Jean explains that this is due to Bergman's rule, which states that the colder the climate an animal lives in, the larger its body will be to maintain its body heat. Since she always gave her clothes to Runka, she grew much more. She is not there for the school competition, but to take Runka home, which she refuses, saying she now has a pack with Jean. This makes Farrell very angry, but seeing that her little sister doesn't want to leave him, she decides to include him in her pack. However, when she is about to lick the protagonist, 
Runka doesn't like it and says that if she does anything to her friends, she will never forgive her. This makes Farrell extremely angry, but when Runka says she will be mad at her forever if she doesn't leave, the giant wolf faints and they leave. Cutting to King, Shio decides to end their friendship because she needs to focus on sports and won't have time for them anymore, making the rest of his mane fall off. Moreover, we discover who is burying the carnivore's heads in the wall, until Aina appears to challenge Feral to a duel, but upon hearing Runka, she runs away. The hyena sees those same lions from before trying to capture Jean and Runka, but he appears and saves them contrary to the real world, and beats them all up. Despite the obvious appearance, the hyena believes she is male, and after the protagonist says she is actually female, the animal sulks. Arriving at the club, Jean sees Aina sniffing Hitomi, and continues saying she is biologically female, until the hyena decides to show what she has between her legs. Then the protagonist reveals that both male and female hyenas have that, and it's not possible to distinguish just by looking. Thus, she comes to her senses while everyone applauds, and the hyena runs away. Arriving home, her father was already expecting this moment, so he kept a female uniform for her. Besides him, Aina's brother also imagined this would happen, so he got a license to be a hairdresser. However, when he cuts her hair, the girl runs away, still affirming she is male. The school's sports festival began, but the cooking club showed little interest except for Runka and Mayubi, who were the only ones wanting to participate. So, the two decided to train together, but with the first physical effort, the sloth died and fell on a mole rat. They were organizing everything for the competitions, and at Runka's request, they allowed them to help, even though it was more of a hindrance than a help. Passing by, Jean and Hitomi saw their effort and decided to participate as well. The next day, the cooking club was ready to join the festival. Then they saw the zebra who had mistreated Runka, who had joined the donkeys and intended to win the games. But after Yukari mentioned that the minimum number of participants per team must be five, they gave up. Suddenly, to everyone's surprise, Mayubi appeared running much faster than usual, speaking normally and ready for the competition. However, after falling to the ground and being taken to the infirmary, it was discovered that she had a cold. Apparently, by increasing her heart rate, her movements also became faster. Even though she was sick, she wanted to help but was advised to rest, and they said they would win for her. The first contest was a race, in which Runka lost to a chimpanzee. In these contests, competitors can use the best traits of their species, and since primates are intelligent and cunning, they were using their tactics to win. Thus, they became the isolated leaders, while the cooking club did not score a single point. Seeing Runka sad about this, the protagonist went to talk to her, encouraging her and deciding to use all his knowledge to defeat the primates. The next challenge was the last one, worth 300 points for the winning team, and consisted of a race through various biomes. We discovered that the donkeys and the zebra wanted to compete to get a room for their club, and Jean started to act. The protagonist sent the two to the first route, a snowy mountain, encouraging them by telling them about Napoleon, who, when crossing the Alps for a surprise attack on Italy, rode a donkey instead of a horse, making them take the lead, even though in history they had walked at a much lower altitude. The second route consisted of an arm wrestling match, in which the koala easily defeated a gorilla. The third route was a scorching desert where Jean was competing, while Hitomi would swim in the fourth route. However, while changing, the chimpanzees knocked her out with a cloth, preventing her from competing. Thus, getting up from her bed and still feeling unwell, Mayubi decided to compete, and even at her pace, she was doing well. However, using a boat, the leader of the primates made her sink, and even so, she did not give up. Seeing the sloth's effort, all the animals watching began to cheer for her, and with their support, she succeeded. And with determination, Runka set off for the finish line. In no time, she caught up with her rival and, by scaring her, won the race and the competition. Additionally, as a thank you for the donkey's help, the cooking club allowed them to use their room for their games. A few days later, a new student appeared. Her name is Mimi, a panda idol who came to the school with her manager to decide whether she would transfer there or not. 
Being a very rare animal, everyone pampered her, but walking alone, she smelled something and arrived at the cooking club, eating all the panda buns made by the protagonist. Used to getting everything she wanted, the girl ordered him to cook more for her, but the protagonist got irritated and expelled her. The next day, she continued asking him to cook for her, and when he still refused, the girl bribed the other club members. Arriving there, the protagonist agreed on the condition that she cooked with him. However, not being used to working, she got angry and threw the food on the floor. With this, Jean got furious and told her not to waste food. While picking it up, we see that the girl was enjoying being mistreated by the protagonist. In the end, she managed to make the buns and loved them. After that, she was invited to join the club by Runka, but Jean said she would only be accepted if everyone in the club wanted her there, meaning Kurumi was still missing. The next day, she decided to transfer to the school, and the cat hated her. Looking for a way to ease things, the protagonist locked Mimi in a cage, calming her down immediately. The panda girl decided she would stay there until Kurumi accepted her and spent the night alone, where she saw the cat and revealed that she had never had so much fun before joining the cooking club. This made Kurumi remember herself, who always had everything she wanted, but being treated as an equal in the club, she was much happier. The next day, she woke up with a blanket and a rat in front of her, proving she was accepted. Everyone arrived at the room, and now she is part of them. However, Runka said that to finalize, she needed to roll a lick with a pack leader, whom she thought was Jean, so she went to him and did it. By the way, a little later, we discovered that it was the protagonist himself who brought the blanket to the panda, catching a cold because of it. At Aina's house, she was trying her best to be a female, but when her father and brother said she was still the same, the hyena went to school to beat up other carnivores as a female, but knew it wasn't right. So, she decided to go after the most feminine female she knew to act like her, thus finding Hitomi. At the school entrance, Pharaoh was watching her little sister until a little girl named Teru appeared, asking to join her pack. In the past, she was saved by the giant wolf and wants to become as strong as her. Because of a misunderstanding when Pharaoh mentioned Runka, she decided she would defeat her to join the pack. Observing the human, Aina tried to act like her, even though she didn't seem feminine at all. So in the cooking club, Hitomi asked for everyone's help. The panda was impressed to discover that Aina had a business despite being a girl. Basically, Aina wanted to be as feminine as Hitomi, and the protagonist said it would be impossible for her. Thus, she started training the hyena until the girl became more and more feminine, changing her behavior. Until, by eating bones, she ended up vomiting the undigested materials in front of everyone. Feeling sad for not being able to be a female like Hitomi, Mimi explained that she should be whatever she wanted, like pandas, who despite being carnivores, ended up eating so much bamboo that they no longer taste meat, thus living the way they wanted. Suddenly, the same jerk lions appeared with Teru as a hostage, and by the protagonist's provocation, they hit the little girl. Although it seemed cruel, Jean knew she was a honey badger, so she had super thick skin, meaning she wouldn't be hurt. Thus, deciding she was a male, Aina finished them off, and the little girl kept asking Runka to duel with her. She refused, and the hyena decided she would fight in her place. Using her stench, Teru tried to knock him out but ended up defeating Runka and Jean. Seeing this, Feral buried her head in the ground, causing the girl pain for the first time, who thanked Runka because now she would enter the pack. However, the giant wolf wasn't going to accept, but seeing that her little sister started to admire her for it, she let Teru join her pack. The day of their trip to the school's aquatic headquarters arrived, and they would stay there for five days, where the protagonist planned to have some alone time with Hitomi to confess his feelings. Suddenly, a white whale girl named Kana appeared to give them a welcome show, which went terribly wrong and she fled. Runka seemed to care about the girl's feelings, so thinking of getting rid of her, Jean encouraged her to go to her and support her. Thus, she and Mimi went there, where the girl said she dreamed of participating in synchronized swimming, but only dolphins were part of the group. Until Ruka, their leader, appeared to scold the girl for the failed show. Hitomi and the other girls wanted to see how Runka was doing, so they went with Jean to help them. 
The protagonist explained that Kana should use her talent if she wanted to join the group, which was singing. So everyone put on uniforms to train for a performance, and when the white whale started singing, a horrible sound came out, killing Mayubi. During the night, the protagonist was very sad to be sharing a room with two male giraffes, where the two had already had something, because basically, more than 90% of the relationships giraffes have are between males. While in the hallway, Ruka appeared and asked the protagonist to stop helping Kana, as it would only make her sadder. In reality, she was very different from the previous day, and that's because dolphins put half of their brains to sleep at a time, thus the girl has two personalities. She also explained that because they were of different species, they couldn't synchronize their swimming, and giving her hope was terrible. While bathing, one of the giraffes sharing the room with Jean wanted much more than that, making the protagonist run. Seeing Runka talking to Kana and seeing how much the wolf girl trusted him, Jean gave her another tip. Her singing shouldn't come from her mouth, but from the cavity in her forehead, where they are in a system in the front part of the head called a melon. Thus, on the last day, the time for their performance arrived, and to the dolphin's surprise, it was a spectacle. They did so well that Ruka and her group joined the performance, further improving the show and making it a success. This way, she joined the group, and at the end of the day, everyone in the cooking club said goodbye to her. In the end, the protagonist tried to confess his feelings to Hitomi, but who was listening was not the girl, but the giraffe who chased him to consummate his passion. Moreover, we see that King was angrier than ever because his beloved was with someone of her species. They went to a secluded place, and the deer said he would protect her, but when some boars appeared, he ran away. However, King arrived and took care of them all. Thus, they were together once more, and he promised he would stop being a lion for her, but as he tried to do things, he got kicked because she was not in heat yet. As they left the classroom for the club, Mimi got jealous of Jean carrying only Mayubi, so along with Runka, she climbed on top of him, making it impossible for him to carry anyone. At the door, a girl was observing the panda, and right after being greeted, she banged her head against the wall until she died. She is a tarsia, a species of small monkey that is very sensitive and, when stressed, bangs its head against trees to take its own life. Wondering what she could have done wrong, Mimi tried to talk to her again and even being gentle, the girl couldn't take it and threw herself headfirst to the ground. The sloth understood the girl as both end up dying even without wanting to, so they decided to help the panda's fan. However, no matter what they tried, Nothing worked until, using a mask, they managed to take the girl to the cooking club without her getting hurt. The girl was very happy with Mimi trying to be her friend and, therefore, again tried to bang her head on the ground, being stopped by Mayubi, who with all her slowness slapped her face. With this, the two made peace, but when it seemed that everything would be fine, both died from being too happy after being hugged by Mimi. King apologized to Shiho for the previous day, and the girl gave him the notice he so wanted. She was in heat. However, a typhoon was coming. He reassured her by saying it would be quick, as lions mating time lasts about 20 seconds, just like some of you who are quick. However, she said that wasn't why she was worried, but rather that she wanted him to meet her parents before they did it, which he immediately accepted. Because of the storm, the underground part of the school was flooded, so the surface students had to share their rooms which Jean hated very much. After discovering he would be roommates with Mickey, he got even more upset. She asked if he would like to be the student council president in her place because since the cooking club appeared, the school environment had become calmer, proving that mixing species is better than separating them, as she wanted to do before. Jean told her what he would do if he became president, expel all non-human students, leaving the school only for him and Hitomi. This made her realize it wasn't a good idea, and after getting dressed, she went outside, where several students were to talk to her, who took the protagonist out of his room and talked to each of them. After that, she continued saying she was a closed-minded person, but Jean explained that the fact that she helps all species so well is proof that she has changed and does a good job. Thus, Mickey was very happy and took off all her clothes, creating a misunderstanding and going to the girl's room. Meanwhile, King met his in-laws, who were terrified of their daughter's relationship with a lion. Moreover, before accepting him, 
Shiho's father said he should participate in the Impala tournament. A human girl named and went to talk to the school principal about transferring there and seemed very interested in Jean and Hitomi. Walking through the school corridors, she saw the protagonist running from several dogs, with Runka in his arms. After entering the cooking club, Hitomi tried to befriend her and explained that the wolf girl was on the last day of her heat, and that's why several dogs were chasing her. Jean took Runka to her room, and since she was in that period, she attacked the protagonist, who has always rejected her. She asked if Jean hated her, to which he replied yes, because he hated all beasts. And when the boy left, we see that Runka was crying. Returning to the club, the protagonist met and, and was kind to her, because she was human. On the way out, the girl tried to talk to Jean, who understood that she wanted to confess to him. So he rejected her, saying he only had eyes for Hitomi. But about to leave, they met and spent some time together, took a bath and slept in the same bed. Cutting to Runka, she took the jacket Jean had left there and left her room because she was hungry, smelling something good and going to the forest, where and was who had left Hitomi's room and gave her some of her meat. They talked a bit when the redhead told Runka about humans, calling them evil and liars. However, Runka said Jean wasn't like that and was determined to make peace with him the next day. The next day, she said the things she had heard, and the protagonist revealed that humans are indeed liars and, therefore, asked her not to take what he says too seriously, meaning he didn't hate her. The scene cuts, and we see which school and belongs to, and that the girl is part of a group of extinct animals. Back to King, he was in the Impala tournament, but as he is a lion, no one wanted to face him. So his father-in-law decided to test if he was worthy of his daughter, but as expected, King won easily, and the couple was accepted. However, when they discovered that all the lion wanted most was to do that with Shiho, they sent him flying with a kick. The day of the festival arrived, and the cooking club was working hard to prepare the food for the restaurant they opened at the school. Aina appeared to help them, already getting into trouble with and because of Hitomi. They were a success and quickly sold everything they had, so they needed to get more supplies for the next day. Then Hitomi said she would go to the gardening club, and then accompanied her, leaving Aina suspicious of her. The extinct group appeared at the festival and was ready to cause trouble. Back to Hitomi, she had a nice moment with and until the girl knocked her out and about to take her away, Aina appeared, saying she wasn't human. One of the extinct, the Andrew Sarkis, found Teru and, threatening her, was knocked out with a single punch from Feral. Returning to the club, Yukari brought her favorite food, which was given to her by some rabbits at the school. Until a girl, belonging to the extinct group, appeared and trying to get close to them, agreed to eat that thing. Being a species of dolphin, her sense of smell is totally underdeveloped, and because of that, she didn't smell that bad odor, so she loved the food. While looking for Itomi, Jean ran into another of the extinct, an Atlas lion, who wanting to take revenge on humans for his extinction, was about to finish off the protagonist. However, King appeared and saved him, but being weak and without his mane, he ended up taking the worst. However, when he hit Shiho, the lion activated his super scion mode and before an epic battle could happen, Jean revealed that the Atlas lion is not extinct, as they have been rediscovered and their numbers are increasing little by little. Thus, he lowered his guard, being defeated, and in the club, the dolphin girl discovered what she was really eating and fainted on the floor. By the way, while all these things were happening, the last member of the extinct group was playing at the school event. Aina was having a hard time against, and until she managed to destroy her spear with her teeth, and before the fight continued, Runka appeared and realized that and was actually sad. Thus, the pack leader tried to make peace with her to make everything okay, until the leader of the extinct appeared. The mammoth Koromoto, who despite being short, is very strong. Jean arrived, understanding that and is actually a Neanderthal, and the leader of the extinct easily defeated King and Aina, going after the protagonist, who was being protected by Runka. Thinking quickly, Jean saw a ring and suggested they settle their differences with a boxing match, and she accepted. The protagonist's plan was to use Runka's speed and win on points. Thus, the fight began. 
Being very agile, the wolf girl managed to dodge all the blows, which were so strong that they were destroying the ring, until, about to be caught, she was saved by the bell. In the second round, Runka was at an advantage for being very fast, but after Koromoto provoked her, she advanced and took a full blow. Even very injured, she got up and, returning to their corners, and told her leader that it was enough, while a mammoth was angry and intended to continue. On the other side, to give Runka strength, Jean patted her head and encouraged her to do her best. However, even so, she had no chance and fell again. But with the support of my Yubi and all the animals present, the pack leader stood up. Thus, seeing that it was wrong, and again tried to talk to Koromoto and seeing that she wouldn't listen, said she would leave the group and wouldn't be her friend anymore. Thus, with the shock of possibly losing a friend, and with a blow from Runka, Koromoto fell and was defeated. After winning, Hitomi forgave Koromoto and, with Anna and her also making peace, everyone made up and together, they cooked as friends. Moreover, misunderstanding what the protagonist said, Runka went after him, but while licking him, King appeared and was very injured as the students from the insect school were coming there. This was the summary of the first season of Seton Academy. Apparently, we have no confirmation if there will be a second season, but if it is released, I will bring it here for you. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. See you later.